to the liquor store around the corner. Boy said, <laughs> I want some gin and juice, but I really don't want a <laughs> bit of Lou Vega. Lou Vega to start us off here at the knockoff <laughs> episode 22. It's a Friday. Day four of Grant Hackett Watch currently in progress. <laughs> it's been a uh, pretty hectic run for the uh, the fallen Olympian, hasn't it, Dan? Yeah, holy shit, man! What a uh, what a train wreck. I guess there's no other way to sort of describe it. But um, obviously, going through some serious mental health issues. I think this is probably the the fourth or mm. or even more sort of Definitely. like controversial incident that's occurred. Um, I guess for those people who don't know, uh, he was most recently. He's most recently ejected off a um, a plane for yeah, yeah. tweaking somebody's nipple when he was allegedly like super drunk. I think it was sort of like an aggressive mm. tweak at that. The dude reclining his chair, so Hacky gave him the old alleged that's nipple right, cripple. That's right. <laughs> I mean, that does shit you off when it, somebody does that, but it does. Uh, it does. but you restrain yourself. Pri- prior to that, it was four a.m. in Crown Casino, and he's walking around the lobby that's in right. a pair of underpants, looking for his four-year-old shit. son. So, and that that w- that now is probably i want to say 2013 or something like that so it's not like these things are new for Hackett it seems mm. to have been a bit of a slippery slope for him and it's it's really finally come to a head i was thinking about it the other day too though where like he's a he won two 1500 meter olympic gold medals he's trained into a, a discipline where he's following a black line basically his entire career where he's got a structured day he wakes up he does this and he does it and he's the shit but now that now that that stops and he goes into sort of life after sport he loses all that structure to his life. All of a sudden, he's not... Oh, there, hey, there's, there's Grant Hackett. He's not sort of the in thing at the time too. So mm. that, that would be a real hard thing to deal with mentally for athletes yeah. as well when all of a sudden, they're just sort of average Joe in the street. Like if you saw... If you went down to the bakery this afternoon and saw Grant Hackett, like, oh, there, there's Grant Hackett. If you saw Conor McGregor, it's holy fuck, there's, there's the Notorious. Yeah. Like you're going to rush yeah. him. So. Yeah, and I guess uh, the, the most recent... Um, scandal on Tuesday was it that it came out? He so. he basically like his his parents actually called the cops on him because he was at their house in Southport, and uh, neighbours reportedly uh, quote said that he was going crazy, stabbing a knife into a, a um, chopping board, or a chopping board. Yeah, so just... it evokes a kind of strange image of uh, you know former Olympian and and mm. world record holder like in the in the middle of the street in the Gold Coast just basically losing his shit and then. The follow-up to that, basically that afternoon when when the when the news broke and they had footage of him handcuffed in the back of a, a police car off to the station, uh, his his both his father and his older brother older brother yes made a um, made a media statement and uh, you could tell there was quite a bit of uh, frustration or animosity mm. coming from there from te- the there family was ten- tension there absolutely but probably and then, warranted yeah and then yeah and then the following day. Um, Grant Hackett posted a photo on his Instagram of like a quite a decent shiner, uh, Mark Hominick spec fucking. <laughs> yeah, oh, he did. He had a bad black eye, <laughs> broken orbital looking looking bloody injury to his face, and and I think the caption was something like, "My brother makes a, makes comments to the media, but does everybody know that he beat the shit out of me?" Like yeah, he, people need to know he's an angry man. Yeah, like that, something but, like that. Yeah, but that's he, that's not the place to no. to raise that. That's not the forum. Like it, no. it just feeds the media ev- right. even more and just makes makes more of a circus out of himself. Really, that's it. It wasn't. It's not something that a well person does. Just air that sort of really, really private dirty laundry just go and air that your out your own on, family on, yeah, that's right yeah. on social media like that so it's, it's it is a difficult one and the things where it put, he's putting photos up on his instagram with his with his bad black eye and the the internet keyboard warriors coming in suck shit grant like you got what you fucking deserved guy all this sort of Snitch chat like with the rat emoji th- yeah shit that's like right that. like, like you're going people are like your big brother did what all big brothers do like they pulled you into line when you're off the rails like Granted, that may be the case, and that and that's their fucking fully private business amongst their family. So for just the average Joe to come along and sink the boot in, like, get your fucking shit together, mate. You don't necessarily what's going on. No, what's going no. on behind closed doors there? So but yeah, but I mean, I guess that is the the paradigm that we're operating in with keyboard warriors these days. And if you put time. that shit up, you're inviting that to come on in. Most definitely. Like and apparently, I think I was watching the the recap of it or whatever. I think I read it online during the day when uh, he first got arrested. And then I sort of watched the, I think it might have been Channel 9 News. But they basically said that uh, he had recently been active on his Instagram with a new girlfriend. And there was like multiple couple photos on there and stuff, which uh, prior to that day had all just been removed. 
So to me, I don't know, it, it screams a little bit of maybe his girlfriend or, or partner has left him and that's, mm. that's sent him on a downward spiral. But we're talking about a guy like a, a father here, a guy who's got, you know, mm. a, a four-year-old and a, and a six-year-old. I think he does or? have two children from a previous relationship. Yeah, but that's, that's the thing too. A lot of people are like, get off the piss, Grant, and things like that, just basically assuming it's alcohol. I can't help but have an inkling yeah. that it may be prescription medication that he's flaunting with as well there well, just he to had be been uh checked into a rehab for mm. sleeping pills was that correct uh, but yeah it was it was in something LA, like that so yeah. yeah he did he did do a rehab stint so sure he may mix alcohol in with that too but a prescription sleeping tablets like that i mean to be walking around delirious at 4 a.m in a in a casino in your underpants when you don't know where your own children are that's yeah i've been drunk before but i don't know if i've ever been that fucking drunk right yeah so yeah you, but you, uh I mean, shout, shout out to Grant Hackett. He is an Australian, uh, you know, sporting hero and, uh, and we do hope he gets better soon. But, you know, that, it's just, it really is a, a fucking train wreck of, of an event that's, that's currently going on in his life. But Just need, needs to lay low. I'd be shutting down all sorts of social media platforms mm. going and getting the best, the best care that you possibly can. Yeah. Because he is, a, he is adored by Australians because what he did in the pool was fucking, was, was unbelievable. Like, yeah. Remember Dan Kowalski, the um, perpetual runner-up? Up, <laughs> love, yeah. love to silver behind Kieran Perkins. Poor so Daniel, <laughs> born at the wrong time. Yeah, Kowalski. Yeah, he came up. He uh, said that he'd spent Christmas time with Grant Hackett, then, right. and spent time up here, and said he, he could sense at that time where it was more of a case of when, not if, that it was going to happen. Really, so really. I think it's something that's coming to a head. And like you said, man, if if you can get the best care and the best sort of possible uh, medical attention he can get, then. Hopefully he gets back on the right path because we certainly do respect his achievements, what he's done, and he, he has a place that's forever in Australian sport. Does he still hold the 1,500 world record or has no, it since no. been beaten? I think it has since been beaten, yeah. It's one of those one of those ones. I don't know if it was broken during like that bodysuit era where they're all wearing the... Uh, yeah, because like when he fucking, did beat it, he fucking smashed he it. Did. I, I think that was Kieran Perkins' record that he yeah, had too because when, yeah. when Perkins was there, he was the shit and everyone thought, oh, wow, these records will stand forever mm. and then... Another one comes along, but... Does that ever stop? Is there ever a process where, you know, world records stop getting beaten or athletes stop getting better? Do we, do we just continue to evolve as athletes and just Probably. bigger, faster, stronger, do you think? Probably. It'd be interesting to see how long Usain's 100-metre records, like yeah. what they last for. They're about yeah. as quick as you can possibly get. But even most recently at London, there was, if we're talking athletics again, there's a 400-metre record that Michael Johnson, where he set the 400 record in Atlanta... Everyone's like, that's untouchable. Like he's run that right. time. South African guy from lane eight came out and broke his record in that final. So was Michael was Johnson uh, American? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was he embroiled in uh, PED controversy? No, no, okay. no. Sorry, still, Michael. Still, yeah, Sorry, Michael. Yeah, still got that. Yeah, <laughs> Le- legacy clean. Probably, probably was just never caught. Maybe who knows? But <laughs> one of those, one of those ones. But he, he still has a pretty high. Uh, he's held in high esteem in that sort of industry. So, right. but um, yeah, I mean, you, th- you think about how much we've seen fighters progress in the UFC, you know, like even over the short space of time in which, um, you know, MMA has been mainstream. We talk about the new era of fighters because we we started out with it being legit mixed martial arts where it would be, you know, such and such from a a kickboxing and Brazilian jiu-jitsu background and such and such from a wrestling Mm -hmm. and a boxing background versus, you know, whatever. And the, the new era is all of these guys who have just trained in straight MMA from from day dot like straight scary like the Rory McDonald's and even a fellow now who's coming through who is like the epitome of the new school MMA fighter to go like Yair Rodriguez like he's, mm. that, he's that guy who's mm. he is only young now but he's been doing the game since he's 15 years old and he has the full array of tricks so did you uh, did you watch that um, fight against BJ yes yeah, yeah yeah look just outclassed him it was as simple as that wasn't it it was a, a, a BJ who probably shouldn't have been in that fight that Dennis Siva matchmaking for BJ was probably perfect mm. and uh, just put him in against a young hungry killer I, I really hope that is the last time you, you do see BJ Penn because he's got he's got no more to achieve and yeah starts taking miles off the clock in uh, copping beatings like that at that age I'd imagine mm. Mm. speaking of beatings fucking Jacare Tim Boge yeah. Impre- <laughs> impressive last like, week just, UFC 208 I think uh, I think you'd you'd find it hard to argue now that uh, the Jacare doesn't deserve a title shot. Would you agree? Completely agree. I know. I think I went on record last week and said that um, they'd be grooming Anderson for a title shot, but uh, Anderson needs to wait wait in line. Uh, Jacare has to get what he deserves now too. He's been on a run where he's finishing people. 
Yes, he lost a really controversial decision to Yoel, but he's gone on in one fight since then. So he has mm. to he has to be next in line. Yeah, I like you know was was holding out hope for a lot of, for a long time, and and for those who listened to the episode last week, Chris was you know confessing that uh, Anderson Silva is his number one all time favorite favorite MMA fighter, and and to be honest, he's definitely up there with mine as well. Um, so I guess as uh, sort of holding that viewpoint towards him, it's always y- you want that fairy tale comeback. And ever since you saw him get dethroned by Chris Weidman, I've been sort of chomping at the bit for him to come back and, and put a flash KO on and, and sort of make that statement. But it does sort of seem, and I mean, even at his own admission in you know interviews and his post fight speech and stuff like that, he you know he's feeling his age and he's not um, he's not as fast as these new guys anymore. And I don't know, just something about the way that he tends to eat punishment these mm. days and, and, and doesn't sort of have the same defensive head movement where against Derek Brunson in that uh, fight on um, the 208 card, a couple of times in the clinch there, Anderson was just basically looked like he was just willingly copying punishment, mm. just copying uppercut after uppercut but in, in the fucking clinch. And it just, you know, you gotta, you got to wonder once that, once that chin's been mm. tapped, like how much, how much more like fight he's got in him but he's obviously having a really fucking good time and uh and you could see that he was emotionally elated at that at that win and um you know some people are saying that that Derek Brunson should have got it namely Derek Brunson Mm. but um which is understandable it was a close fight but uh I don't know I think you know it's it's always hard with with the judging and that card was in New York and we saw some you know sort of controversial refereeing and and judging going on but um you know, for, for mine, and, it, and I, I always sort of make the analogy of going back to a street fight, you know, the take the Anderson Silva versus Michael Bisping fight, for example, you know, if that was a street fight, you say Anderson won. Mm. But, uh, you know, it, it doesn't always tra- translate to whoever had the most significant shots or whoever had the biggest moment of the fight doesn't always win the fight. So, you know, you get you get your point fighters and stuff like that. But I don't know. In, in my opinion, just as an objective spectator who, you know, doesn't really have the, the insight on, on, you know, ju- judging scorecards or anything like that, I, I, I still think Anderson won that fight, deservedly so. Uh, where would you go next for Anderson Silva? I mean, he'd probably be ranked four or five in that division we hear yeah. only this week that the, the return of uh, Canadian superstar George St. Pierre, he may be coming back yeah. to the octagon. So that, that was the... You know, you talk of super fights and that became a buzzword probably in MMA maybe like four or five years ago. And that was always touted as uh, GSP had been on a, a, an enormous tear at 170. Anderson at 185. They're talking about trying to make a catch weight, mm. maybe meet in the middle. And I think there is potential for that fight to happen now. It's probably five years too late, a la Pacquiao Mayweather. But yeah. it, is, uh, it, reckon, it is doable. Do you reckon Anderson can get to a catch weight? I think he could probably get to 180. If he was 185 on the weekend, I I didn't see the fight card live, but I've seen a few highlights of it. And he's typical Anderson where he wasn't that sort of really cut in half physique. I think on come weigh-in day, if if you really made a cash incentive for him to get down to, say, 180, I think he uh, he could could make that. And I think George would probably weigh in it looking uh, in fucking incredible nick at 180 yeah yeah he probably walks around 190 200 maybe i'd say so yeah somewhere in that vicinity for sure i remember that photo of um conor mcgregor bailing him up in the street and they stand next to each other and there doesn't look to be a massive size differential i mean obviously you know somebody snaps a photo on an iphone it's not really relative but um but yeah, I mean, he's 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 thicker than he seems, but he's he's not. He's definitely would be the smaller man in that fight, without a doubt. But uh, back to your question about Anderson, I don't know, like, because I felt that the Derek Brunson choice was strange to me because fucking Rob Whitaker had just beaten Derek Brunson. It so. just put his lights out. It was it yeah. was weird mat- matchmaking. It almost seemed like maybe a timing thing for that card to try and give that a shot in the arm. Yeah, and I just kind of different. feel like, you know, at this point, what more does Rob have to do? Like, mm. what more does he have to do to get a fucking name? Definitely. Um, he, he's, he's looked fucking lethal for, for his last, you know, streak of fights. And uh, he's he's knocking on the door, but it's just that log jam of killers at fucking middleweight that's um that's hard to sort of it's hard, get a it, it get is a hard to match him up. There, I yeah. mean, you wouldn't um if I'm in the matchmaker's shoes, I wouldn't give Anderson to a guy like Luke Rockhold for his for his comeback fight that because that 
might be the end of Anderson. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? So yeah. I think I think Anderson could fight Rob next. I don't think Rob Whitaker has a has a fight particularly lined up for the minute. So no, I don't think he I does. I think he uh, he could definitely hang. I think Rob versus Anderson could be a great fight now because you know Rob will try and get after him. Yeah. So ma- maybe match that one up, but then you have. But then it had, yeah, yeah you, it you doesn't make sense because he just beat Derek yeah, Brunson. That's it. And then then that would leave Rockhold out in the wings. Like who's Rockhold yeah. meant to fight? Yeah. Weidman's already lined up with Gaygard, so yeah. A bit, bit tricky at 85, but as you say, there's just these fucking murderers row of guys who are all in contention yeah. for a title shot against probably the most vulnerable champion in the fucking uh, roster. Yeah. You know? Allegedly, uh, Bisping said he wants either Diaz Diaz again or... Oh, is it just George or, or Bisping? Bisping. GSP? Uh, what, did, yeah. what, did, what did I say? Uh, Bisping. Bisping. Oh, sorry, sorry. Bisping yeah. versus yeah. Nick. That'd be all right. That'd be yeah. fucking <laughs> fine. Man. I'd sell the fuck out of that, those two. I wouldn't be mad at that at yeah. all. Fuck um, yeah. Yeah, I think GSP wants. Oh, you know, who knows what he wants? But the, from what's reported, uh, he's talking about Nick Diaz rematch, which that that was a that was somewhat of a fun fight. That that went five rounds to a decision because he couldn't put him away. But yeah. George was on a bit of a run of decisions towards the end there, and I yeah. know there is a bit of. I've always been a fan of the guy because when I first started to get into MMA, he was like a young kid on the rise, sort of working towards his title shot. So it sort of he was one of the original superstars when I first got on board. So it's always had a bit of a soft yeah. spot for him, but times where people aren't nearly as excited as me for him coming back because they're like, oh, what, you just lay and pray for the next 25 yeah, and grind it yeah. out. So I, I can understand both sides of that. Yeah, I feel that as well. And I think you and I both uh, had the experience of living in Canada for a while and he's basically a fucking demigod over there. <laughs> so you go you go see a UFC at a bar in Canada and, and you you get the GSP bug, that's for sure. Definitely. Did we see him fight when we were there? Was he active in 2013? What was that I think he massive? fought uh, Johnny Hendricks. Well, when we were there. What was that massive Toronto card that he headlined? Uh, he fought Jake Shields on that card, I think. That was at right. the... They had 55,000 there or something yeah, like that. And that's yeah. when uh, Melbourne passed that as the attendance record for uh, mixed martial arts when Holly Holm beat uh, Ronda Rousey. And uh, Holly Holm hasn't won a fight since then. Mm, mm. Did she, you, what was your take on that? I, I didn't see that. It was a controversial five-rounder was... If you're the referee, do you deduct a point off Jermaine? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, uh, completely agree with Joe Rogan. He was going off his fucking nut uh, when that happened the first time, saying you 100% have to take a point. Um, And that was the first time. Then it happened again. And uh, almost two shots were thrown after the buzzer on the second time around. And uh, the the commentators, you know, Joe Rogan and and DC were screaming for them to fucking take a point. And the referee warned her at that at that. Second, second infringement. Yeah. So, the one of those shots after the bell hurt her. Is that yeah, right? she, she yeah, was, exactly. Because she had Holly stopped fighting, and then all of a sudden, crack yeah. it comes. So, yeah. a lot of people were trying to sort of pass the buck, saying, "Oh, you know, Jermaine shouldn't have taken a point. It was the referee's fault, and things like that." But. I can't help but know that you have 10 seconds until you hear the sticks, you see the other person stop exactly. fighting and you still throw exactly. one. So, yeah, so. I thought that I thought that was a bit fucking shit. And uh, I don't know, in terms of the fight, it was, again, it was a really, really close fight. And uh, Holly was definitely super busy. Um, but I feel that, uh, and I think, I think the commentary mentioned it at one point, but she's got that, uh, like a tennis player, like she, she, she shouts sort of like makes a noise every time she throws a kick or a punch. Uh, 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 and it, yeah, in a yeah. sense, it's kind of telegraphing your shot. Like mm. it's, it's letting them know. So I thought she became a little bit predictable in her striking. And, um, you know, it didn't, it didn't appear that even though she was the busier fighter that she was getting the better of um, Jermaine. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, th- I think it could have gone either way, honestly. But um, I would have I would have liked to have seen Hol- Holly get the W. Um she definitely wasn't wasn't disgraced in her performance, but apparently now she's she's trying to appeal the decision. Is that is that like commonplace? Does that ever happen? It it does happen, and it, it happened before. Probably one of the most recent ones I can think of was when uh, Fedor or against uh, Fabio Maldonado in Russia in another organization. They had a fight, okay. and I think Maldonado ended up appealing it and got it overturned. So oh, it, really? ended up, it ended up becoming a draw. So right. Whether, like, it's a lot of effort and chances are it probably won't be overturned. Yeah. They're probably the easiest solution for them is to create a, a rematch for that, knowing that it was, you know, if the referee does his job and takes a point, it is a majority draw. So mm. whether, whether that is the case or not, but with Jermaine, a, a big bugbear of mine was, gets on, they fly, Chris Cyborg, who's, who's the, that division 
it, at one forty five for the women was essentially created for. Yeah, she tests positive to steroids. Like if you if you're only a casual fan and don't know who this Chris Cyborg is, it's basically uh, Google her highlights. Yeah, that, that's right. She's at, probably known as the the best female mixed martial arts fighter that's ever lived, and is incredibly masculine in her physique and her skill set, and is yeah. just on on another level to a lot of these other ladies. And so the UFC creates a division for her. She fails a drug test. So they're left between a rock and a hard place. So create a title fight between home and Jermaine on the weekend. Despite being under suspension, the UFC still fly Chris Cyborg out to Brooklyn, which is incredibly rare. They don't... When you're normally around events like that and you get a drug suspension, you're blacklisted. Like, you don't go to any fan expos and things like that. The UFC flies her all the way out here to do promo work for it, knowing that this is her division. They ask her what's next, Jermaine, when she wins the decision and says, oh, my hand's fucked. I've hurt my hand. I'm going to need surgery. Yeah. Who cares? That you know this is Cyborg's division. Like that's what I, I take my hat off to the guys like Conor McGregor and, and prior to him, Chael Sonnen. The second that these guys started to go on a run, they called out the champions. Conor, I think, won his second fight. Was it against fucking Brandau or one, one of those real early days for mm. him? Mm. Gets on the mic. He's calling out the champion immediately. Like just calling it out and creating beef with the top guy immediately. Chael did the same. He, I think he got a. When he beat uh, Michael Bisping on his way up, but a close decision, grabs the mic afterwards, just goes, Anderson Silva, you absolutely suck. Just creates beef and tension amongst the fans. It's like, oh, well, this guy's going after him. Exactly, and, exactly. And Jermaine just completely missed the boat with it. Grant, hey, say your hand's sore, that's fine, and you need an operation, but create something. That's your moment on the mic, on a pay-per-view card to go, fuck that cyborg. I, I can beat her. I know I can. She's a bit... like what, what, you, can go, you can be gracious about it. You go, look... I honestly think I can knock her the fuck out. Like, I honestly think I could. G- give me a shot. Just create something. No, no my, ha- my hands hurt. But exactly, man. Because, you know, this, this fight game is a, is a very different thing to the rest of, you know, the, the, the regular sporting paradigm. You, you have the ability to fucking jump the queue with a good business marketing strategy. And, and you, you bang on in, in you know, your, your, your lines to Conor McGregor or fucking Chael Sonnen because... These guys understand that, you know, the, the fighters have a limited time in order to sell themselves. And, and every, every win, you're only getting closer to your next loss. You know what I mean? It's, it's such a fucking delicate thing that every single fight is 50-50 that you could be knocked out. So make hay while the sun's shining. You know what I mean? And, and I commented the other day in this whole, you know, craziness of Conor McGregor talking about a fucking boxing match with Floyd Mayweather that's it's becoming less and less crazy as as time goes on and the rest of these UFC fighters must be looking at their managers and being like what the fuck are you doing but I think the onus needs to be on the fighters as well and and Jermaine had the perfect fucking opportunity then to call Cyborg out create some tension create some drama create some fucking interest man because because right now it's like she is not a household name no nobody fucking mainstream knows who Jermaine Deronda May is no way and if she had come out and said some outlandish shit about Cyborg and we got a reaction out of Cyborg you know granted it is the the WWE type model but that's what fucking sells look at Conor McGregor he's on the front of fucking GQ driving around in, in fucking all sorts of luxury cars and going from designer shop to designer shop making absolute bank off the back of not that many fucking fights no, man there's, no. there's plenty of other people in the man. UFC who have fought a whole lot more than him proper journeyman who don't have the fucking who don't have half the fucking star power that he does man. and 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 I've you know I always like to me it seems that these type of guys have a strategy in place before they get to that fight they're visualizing the wind they're visualizing grabbing the mic they're visualizing who they're going to call out and why because they know that this is a business decision so this is like you know regardless of if i need fucking hand surgery or if i think i can beat this person i need to fucking sell it you had a perfect opportunity and it was uh i need to get surgery on my hand and it's just like oh, all drag, of the air, drag. Excuse, excuse me all of the air goes out of the tires and it's just like you know, it's it's not really such a sellable fight now, and I hear that she's she's even sort of saying she wants a rematch with Holly Holm now. But you just beat Holly Holm, like why why are you not going for the bigger payday? It's sort of, you know, I I, I don't know. It, it's it's frustrating as a fan because because you do want that star power, and 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 that comes from these these extreme rivalries, and 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 you know whether you like it or not, people that talk shit. But I mean, 
you know, I, I'm definitely in support of good sportsmanship and all that sort of stuff, but I just come back to the fact that this fight game is a different box of frogs, it man. Really, it it's, really is. It's a, it's a different fucking thing, and the sportsmanship usually comes after. Like, you know... That. Exactly what I was going to don't, say. Don't, like, you know, you don't have to fucking... Tony Ferguson it and fucking you know where's your, where's your son at <laughs> where's your son at and get fucking get too personal and shit like that but but I mean like you can you can create some hype like Chael Sun and Spec like fucking the, the Tito Ortiz fight he's still at it son. exactly like, like Chael he he lost a rematch to Anderson Silva like the biggest fight of his career comes out and loses it again. The next fight, he goes up a weight division in a title fight against John Jones, coaching a season of time. <laughs> yeah. Like that, if you didn't, if you're at, at home and you're a fighter and you don't learn the blueprint of what to do from guys like that who are paving the way for you, you're not paying attention. Wake the fuck up to yourself. It's, <laughs> as, it's as simple as that. There's money there to be had, and you're just getting the mic and saying, "Oh, who, whoever next they give me." It doesn't matter if you're ranked 15. Call out the bloke in tenth. Start talking some shit about him. Just please, please do it. So. Burger, if you're at home and you get the win on uh, <laughs> Eternal <laughs> MMA 22. Oh, friend, just friend, about yeah. to throw to that. <laughs> yeah. friend, friend of the potty, uh, uh, Justin, who's, who's been on for a couple of episodes before. He's co- got a match coming up at uh, Eternal MMA on March 11. So if he, if he wins and grabs the mic afterwards, we're expecting heat from that. From El Fuego. El Fuego. <laughs> yeah. Go to that namesake. Go to that, that fucking that, Latin heat, that son. That white flame. <laughs> La Flama Blanca. <laughs> Candy powders. <laughs> no, props to that. We, we'll, uh, we'll definitely be ringside for that one or, or cage, side, cage side, I should say. But, um, yeah, Berg's, uh, Berg's second. Uh, so this is – it's, it's amateur, yeah. So, it is. But, um, but it's um, – he's gone upper class now. So That's right, it's, yeah. Um, in in his, his first fight as C class, I, he would have to confirm this, but from, from what I know, I, I think it's a case of you're an O&O coming into an amateur fighter. You can't come in and just start going under full MMA rules. So now he's got the one, the one fight and the one win under his belt. He can go to the next, uh, the next division of B class. So this time he's allowed – does away with not, the shin yeah, guards. No, no shin guards, and he can strike on the ground, just no elbows on the ground, I think. So I think there might be something against leg locks or something like that on the ground too when it gets to the jiu-jitsu. But okay. he's uh, yeah, definitely working hard with it. Got a bunch of uh, private lessons off some striking coaches and stuff now too. So, yeah, we're, we're keen as to get there for that War one. El Fuego. Card coming up this weekend... It's a bit of a pain in the ass for the for Australian fans. It's on, it is on Monday. It's not, not, oh, the, okay. not the Sunday Monday card, card, so... This one is U- a UFC fight night and main event, I believe it, initially it was meant to be uh, Junior DeSantos versus Stefan Struve was meant to be that, but Struve pulled out with an injury, okay. which then got JD as a title shot. He's fighting Stipe Miocic in a, in a rematch for the, uh, for the title fight. Not on this card, but I- in the future. The, that main event has been replaced with another heavyweight fight, uh, Derek the Black Beast Lewis versus oh, uh, shit. Ronda Rousey's uh, boyfriend uh, Travis Harper Brown, who's coming off a loss, a couple of losses. Yeah, Tra- Travis is in. Uh, look, heavyweight th- these days isn't that deep. So look, I don't don't see him per- like personally. I don't see him if he is to lose this fight. He probably doesn't get his walking papers because there isn't that depth there. But sure, uh, yeah, he would really, really uh, a win would do wonders for him at this point. And that, that's a tough fight coming out against Derek Lewis. He's a guy who's on the rise. I uh, don't know. I think Travis is. Gone to King's MMA. He's gone away from Edmund Tarverdi and uh, for the for the latter part of this camp. So see if probably it, see if a that good move in in light of recent. Uh, you would have to be recent just, happenings with. Just seems a distraction. If yeah. it would be anything too, you know, you know, if you do come out and the performance isn't there, it's, does it get blamed straight on your coach? Like you just don't want that sort of thing in the back of your mind leading in. So he's gone and got to freshen up. I don't know who I'm going to pick there. I know. I'm probably Derek Lewis. I think he's a really funny guy. If you follow him on any sort of social media, he's a pretty wacky character. True. So I'll I'll, I'll go uh, Derek Lewis to to stop him. If it's five rounds, I could not see that going five rounds. I'll go yeah, Derek Lewis at the second round TKO. Yeah, yeah. It's a uh, it's a tough one. I, I like uh, I'm trying to think of the fight. What was the fight? That was really fucking crazy. With Travis Brown versus uh, Arlovsky. Arlovsky. Yeah, first oh, first round oh. they just, but like both guys just had like, I remember at one one point in that fight, 
Arlovsky's legs just stiffened up. Like he was there swinging punches, and he just went mm. like stiff legged, mm. like still throwing. Unbelievable. One of those like uh, one of those crazy ones where you think you, you think somebody's going to win, and then it just completely turns around. Like Pat Barry, Czech Congo yeah. spec, oh, <laughs> the ultimate slobber knocker. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, that, and that was only a one round fight, Brown versus Arlovsky. But yeah, if you're at home on Fight Pass looking for a uh, one of those real quick high action fights. Yeah, that, there you that, go. That, That's an exciting about, fight. About as good as you get. Um, co-main event, a uh, long term nemesis of the knockoff, uh, <laughs> J- Johnny Big Johnny Big Rig slash Johnny under the bus. <laughs> Hend- Hendrix coming up against uh, Cuban Australian Hector Lightning Lombard. So yeah, all, yeah. All, all team Hector there. Team but Hector for sure. That is another one where both guys probably do need a win. I know Hector Hector coming off a loss was his last loss. Dan Henderson. I think so. Uh, yeah. Probably probably been that long mm. before, since getting the medical clearance yeah. after that oh, one. Man, probably needed that time yeah. off. That's smart. Yeah. Uh, Hector's not getting any younger and Hendo hit him with that sort of back elbow or whatever that just put him out. Mm. And, what, and what was one of those knockouts where they almost went and like showed the crowd for a bit because it really took him a long time to get yeah. up. Yeah. It's like, yeah. is, is, he, is Hector okay over there? What's, yeah. what's going on? And Buffer, I remember looking at Bruce Buffer there. Must have been on Fox. It was, it was a uh, pay-per-view, I think. That really? was one of the big ones. They of, don't um, usually do that on pay-per-views. Fox, they do. Like, if there's yeah. a real nasty or, injury, they'll cut the fuck crime, away from crime, it. Uh, any crime <laughs> yeah. scene, it's like, oh, no, 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 I won't yeah. show that. But look, I'll go, I'll take Hector to, oh, I think he can beat, he can I'm going to go. You'll put him away. I think this is the end of Johnny Hendricks. He'll be looking to do something else after this. I think so. Yeah, I think uh, you know we we have discussed it a few times before, but uh, post Usada um, testing, he just hasn't looked the same guy. He hasn't looked the same guy that was starching people on a, on a regular basis. And a couple of really uh, strange sort of um, media interviews and things around pre and post fight, and he just a couple of strange statements about sort of not really having his heart in it or not training yeah. to to his full potential and stuff like that. He's, so he lost leading into one of his last fights, he was training three days a week. That's right. Like yeah. You just cannot be serious doing that at, at this sort of elite level. It's just we're talking a different ball game. So yeah, go, go Hector, pulling for him deluxe. Yeah. Have we got uh oh Nordine's on this card, bro. Nordine Taleb <laughs> <laughs> That's his fucking that man Nordine. fucking Nordine here. How Tyler Manaroa for all, all the uh would never seen him fight in the UFC. He was only ever in that Ultimate Fighter house. And, yeah, uh, it was unfortunate what happened mm, to Tyler. Yeah, you could always tell that he was. Uh, he had a really rough sort of Australian edge to him. That guy. He's a, he's mm. a from a Sunshine Coast actually. Yeah, was he? But he just won. Uh, he won people over on the Ultimate Fighter just for. He was only nineteen going into that house, flying over to North mm. America to go and fight, and uh, he ended up winning a fight against Nordin Taleb. He won a decision yeah, in that. True. Remember, and yeah. then I think he went on to lose another fight after that. So it was out of the competition, but. He was one of the guys who seemed super marketable and he was on his way to the UFC and then posted a photo of a African-American kid in a shopping trolley and went on a bit of a sort of yeah, racial tirade. Get of used like, to yeah, bars, the, the, N-word yeah, or something yeah, like yeah, that. that's just, right. Just like, you know, a really naive... Uh, Young and you know, silly. Social, yep. ...social media post that ultimately cost him his career. Yeah, and that's, it was. That's yeah. what we're operating in yep. these days. No one's, and no one's really heard from him in any sort of like elite level MMA mm. since, which is so unfortunate, but... Jeez, if you're up there at uh, Soul Bar Malula Bar tonight and you bump into him, fucking be nice to him. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> he was a, yeah. This kid was a fucking monster. Yeah, yeah. Fuck, that's uh, it's pretty crazy. Uh, for for the, <laughs> it's kind of a jump now from from MMA to to trash TV. But for those of you watching uh, the the current season of Married at First Sight, there's a uh, 25 year old girl on there who's quite attractive with a huge set of fake tits, and uh, you know the the show is basically marketing these people as you know they're looking for love and and all this sort of stuff and basically what sort of comes out throughout the show is you know some people are legitimately on there for for a matchmaking thing but uh there's a lot of people on there just fame whoring and uh brycey sent me an article this morning of uh Cheryl, 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 Cheryl uh, snorting a line of coke off her own fake tits, mm. and uh, subsequently the media have obviously done some further digging, and they've discovered that she used to be a topless waitress. She fucking attended uh, some sort of billionaire's party as like a rent, like as like a pff, titty girl yeah. slash and, prostitute. And, and who knows? Like basically, yeah. for sure, just 
Where the smoke, there's fire with that sort of stuff, isn't there? She posted uh, that video of her snorting a line of coke off her own tit on her own Instagram. That's right, yeah. It wasn't like it was a leaked video or anything. She nah. leaked it herself to put it out there. You have to... And then, and then, and then applies it, yeah. to be on a TV show and think that thinks that's not going to blow You're up. You're dead right. right. If you haven't if you haven't seen the program, it is as trashy as it gets, and that's why <laughs> I like it too. I just I w- like being uncomfortable watching my television. <laughs> like fuck just, yeah, just like clenching your <laughs> asshole in the chair. Like oh <laughs> fuck this. But he's um. They're matched up, so you must go through a, a series of psychological exams and put what you're looking for a partner, and it, it, it must be very fairly detailed because they have three doctors there on a panel that sort of pair these people up with, which is what is supposed to be their yeah. I, I, person's ideal yeah. match. But maybe there's maybe ten couples on the program. They might set six up with their best, yeah. and then get and well, they fuck four <laughs> people over for, the, like, for, for our up. entertainment. Fucking so, if they did. But there was a the, there was a couple in their fifties that were on there. I'll get back to Cheryl in a second, but there's a couple in their 50s on there where she distinctly requested that she get someone of Polynesian <laughs> descent. Like and, this they, island and they give her this fucking John. Like, white Aussie durry munching pokey playing yeah. fucking... <laughs> Footy head. <laughs> and she's like... And, and not only that, they stitch her up because it is married at first sight. So le- legit, the first time you see the person they've matched yeah. you with is she, at this She's like, walking down the Is aisle. at this faux wedding or whatever. Yeah. And so for this bird who's obviously put in every single fucking interview like leading up to it that she's she's really into somebody from the islands and somebody of yeah. Polynesian. Yeah, yeah. And shit. Loves a yoga. And so they, so they do a, literally a whole Polynesian wedding and they carry her down on this float like <laughs> Polynesian styles and shit like that. Oh, just to fucking yeah. cheat her up. And Here just comes to Mr. Wright. Like, oh my God. Like, because, because, yeah, I think uh, when Bryce is saying, you know, the, um, the panel of psychologists that they have there that, that match them based on on mm. ideals or whatever is is loosely used because there, there is definitely a whole lot of ratings grabbing going on there. And I thought it was fucking – I thought it was pretty funny. They actually had this one guy who um, – who was like his his like they always have you know when he's when he's saying something to, something to the camera his name will come up with with their occupation underneath and he was data entry slash male stripper <laughs> this guy <laughs> who subsequently speaking of show, social media as well from his male stripping days a photo came out of him just fully fully in the nud and uh, and decent horse on him mm. there was there was a pretty <laughs> funny comment because he's obviously doing one of these like male stripper shows in a in a nice hot room and he's got a bit of got a bit of oh. length and and stretch on the old ball bag and fucking and <laughs> And dick skin, <laughs> and his nut nut sack is literally as long as his dick. And somebody what? comments, it looks like he's got two dicks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 uh. It, well, I have seen the photos uh, referring to what it, Dead Set is though, because he, he is well endowed the bike, but he's got like this. His saggy bag is just hanging <laughs> right down next to where his the helmet is. Yeah, and you're like, him. like, hey, what is that? Is that a photo? What is that? His nut sack. <laughs> <laughs> but so uh, he's so he's like this. Uh, Basically, psychopath, dumb as dog <laughs> shit, fucking like control freak dude who's who's super into his fitness and uh, and his prerequisite in all of his uh, you know application or whatever would have been I'm really into somebody that's in, into health and fitness mm. and uh, you know. I, I can't even think of the bird's name, and uh, and with no, no offense intended, Scarlet. No offense intended, <laughs> but she she's like probably the ugliest girl on the show, like ve- v- extremely yeah. unattractive, yeah. and uh, and I thought it was funny when they did the uh, basically do you want to stay or go type thing where the couples get to interview, um, or they get interviewed by the the Expert. therapists or yeah. whatever. And uh, and he was pissed, man. He he was oh, fucking man. pissed off. He was like, I want to know from you guys. How you think this is this is my best match? After I said I was specifically into somebody in health and fitness, and you give me an aspiring author, like he was, he was and they was were fucking ropeable, yeah. and and you could tell that that they were sort of like, oh shit, yeah, he's yeah. called us on our bullshit yeah, a little bit. Like, he, he, know, he knows, like oh, <laughs> he knows like, he got made an example of. But drew the I guess short you know, like if you are if you are one of these people, like the lady that's you know gagging for a Polynesian dude, or or the guy that's you know got got a list long of what is what is perfect woman needs to be like then they're going to make an example of you and they're going to they're going to show you this is why you're single you know that's like this that cheryl the 25 year old who's on there who's like snorting drugs off her own fucking breasts and things like that she's there on the program we got matched up with a guy who was an entrepreneur slash fucking tool like he was an absolute <laughs> fucking tool that guy, yeah he was a fuckwit from he, brisbane he, yeah, was he fuck it yeah really yeah wow ne- no i ne- never seen him around before or anything but no he, he, he was a fuckwit and i had like you know i'm i'm 
candid usually with with who I throw on yep. under the bus on the knockoff. But yep. he was, John, uh, if you're out there, you're a fuck yeah, with. Pull, pull your head in, mate. <laughs> you're not fooling anyone with that bullshit. Celebrity boxing yeah, match, yeah, fucking yeah, all day. Yeah. Definitely, we'll t- I got your number, ch- John. For charity, <laughs> <laughs> full on charity match. So this this Cheryl bitch was with John, this uh, the Brisbane guy, and there was just nothing there in terms of a connection or anything like that. They're at these at these dinner parties, just not conversing. It, it just wasn't the right sort of match at all. But now this Cheryl obviously realises that her five minutes of fame is going to be very fucking brief mm. if she uh, decides to leave the show. So this John, gets it, he gets out of there and Cheryl goes to see the producers and goes and says, oh, I spoke to this other guy at the party. Like, you could pair me up with him. Mm. Like, he, he, got, he got fucked over as well. Like, his bride left on the wedding night, but... Who's to say that we couldn't get married one day? Exactly. I've only like, had uh, I've only had seven and a half minutes. I want my I want my other half. E- exactly. You know? I want exactly my full right. fifteen minutes here. Exactly right. So she's gone. And the, even the experts were a little bit taken aback with it too. And then just the uncomfortableness of watching the the uh, other housemates there just grill this fucking girl on. You know, like she's twenty five from from the Gold Coast. He's thirty eight from interstate. There's mm. a thirteen year age disparity to begin with, and. Apparently, these, there's these two chicks on the show that actually know this uh, guy from outside from mm-hmm. the outside world, so they're super protective of him. And now, well, a couple of days later, all the photos come out. It starts to be pretty fucking obvious to me that there is some fame whoring going yeah, on here. Yeah, and I mean, let's be fair. Like, as much as I'm sure a lot of them are nice people, and there's probably some you know realistic and and honest intentions going on in there as well. There's uh, there's there's something to be said for somebody that wants to apply for that show, you know what I mean? Like, uh, out of all of the reality TV shows, like, I might be inclined to apply for Survivor or something like that, but mm. you would not see me for fucking dead on on a fucking dating show. That's like Mud sticks on that shit too. Like, you could, you could be and acting could, one way in the house and they just pret- portray you through editing to just be exactly. this fucking narcissistic idiot when exactly. they're extracting three sentences out of a five-hour yep. conversation yep. and you're ruined. Like, here we are go, yep. geez, that guy was a fuckhead. And we, <laughs> chances are he probably are because I, exactly. do, do, like, I do trust my own judgment on things like that, but fuck, it's quality. It's next, next, up next on Sunday night, this will be posted before the weekend. So yeah. if, you, if you're at home on Sunday night... Uh, Luke okay, Rockhold, Luke Rockhold found uh, found that out the hard way that they can they can do some editing to make you out to look pretty fucking terrible. <laughs> terrible. My family know who I am. That's all that matters. <laughs> you had to go into bat like he's PR guys. I was like, man, yeah. you need to release a statement about that. You yeah. got hung out to dry. We, we've talked about it before, but for those who haven't seen it, check out the Celebrity Matchmaker. Uh, millionaire matchmaker episode with Luke Rockhold, the the UFC fighter on it, <laughs> and uh, they make him out to be one chauvinistic motherfucker in, in, in his fucking clip. Most definitely, but oh, good on good on Rockhold. He can unblock me when he's ready. On um, <laughs> <laughs> all I did was criticise him because uh, he was out on some boat party while and um, I mentioned something about Chris Weidman fucking training harder than him while he's out on the fish right, with women and stuff. Right. And look, that was look, look what happened. He came out and fucking bashed Chris Weidman. So <laughs> <laughs> I guess he had the last laugh it's in the air. <laughs> he's still my boy. <laughs> um, well, you're missing out because um, he recently did a, a trip through Indo or Bali and, and Australia that looked fucking awesome. Yeah. Like, and uh, and you got to follow it the whole time on um, on his Instagram. But he was basically hanging out with Corey Wilson and and uh, Mick Fanning and mm. did some training with uh, John Wayne Parr and. Doing a whole like obviously Mick and those boys are into some pretty uh, pretty cool training methods down Definitely. there on the Gold Definitely. Coast, doing a lot of breath work on underwater, and it looked like it it was a good thing for him, you know, like a a, a, a solid break, do do a few forms of different training, and uh, he doesn't he doesn't have anything booked, so it, it you know it makes sense for him to take some time, recover, heal, get a bit of that vitamin D and salt water down here. It's beautiful. Good like, good break for Luke because you know that. Getting knocked out by Michael Bisping would burn inside mm, that guy mm. like you wouldn't believe. So that uh, that w- post fight press conference would still be sizzling <laughs> for him, bro. <laughs> Bisping coming I'm over out here, with Luke. Two <laughs> beers in his fucking singlet <laughs> and, his, and his flip flops. <laughs> like, ah, I told you. Like, oh man, come on, Bisping. Like, you've had your say, man. Yeah, like, he goes yeah. went from so gracious in the cage afterwards. Like, threw him under the bus a bit. Then they're like, no, all, all jokes aside, you know, re- fully respect to Luke. Mm. Ten minutes later in the back, he's doing a full regime again. <laughs> like, oh, man, 
<laughs> and he was Fuck even like, I'll probably regret some of this shit that I'm saying yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. He had a little buzz on, but just the adrenaline rush for a journeyman like that to finally get a strap. Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm Can't not be mad, mad at, at him. him. Not yeah. mad at him. Yeah. Particularly to rectify the, uh, the, the loss in the first fight that they had in, um, mm. in uh, Sydney. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So it's 1-1. Yeah. So that... Mm. Hey, m- Never say never. We might see a third one of that. Yeah. I know. I know Luke would accept it just no. to fucking set the record straight more than anything. Yeah, fuck that's got a sting though, man. He was he was knocking on the door hard, like so close, and it just looked like he was too confident in that fight. He was, Most definitely. you know, came in just looking super relaxed, and, and I think Rogan said like almost like he was bored, mm. like and uh, and just got caught, man. And and and, yeah. and that's what we're saying about this fight game. It's you know like. You can have all of the fucking hype behind you, and then the next thing you know, you you Mystic Mac fucking tapping to Nate Diaz. You know, mm. like shit happens. It's like, oh shit, that was fucked. Mm. But, uh, anyhow, my love yous and leave yous for a little Friday afternoon quick fucking double throwdown session. That was uh, that was good fun, Dan. Yeah, we threw down hard. We had uh, we had a couple of beers and. Uh, Thanks for joining us. We'll uh, we'll endeavour to uh, to bring you something next week. Uh, we got Chris back on deck. He's uh, he's normally um, he's normally away a fair bit. I don't know if you've sort of noticed um, his uh, his absenteeism in uh, in a few of these episodes. But you're probably going to start hearing a lot more of Chris because he's uh, he's back in the in the land of uh, Brisbane mm. City. So uh, plenty gonna, more content to come, fam. We're going to have a... Uh, Chris is going to go into the bus next week, just a sneak preview. We found his uh, Mike Dolce whey protein did, in, the, <laughs> in the kitchen of the, uh, that of the studio. He's been a, uh, a huge critic of Dolce over the years, but... Dolce still, knows. Still funding him like he is that Aubrey Marcus <laughs> shit. <laughs> Little brief uh, edition of Under the Bus at the end of this there episode. We go. There nice. we go. Episode 22 in the books. Love you and leave you, peeps. Bye.